All right, everybody. Welcome back to the second episode. Well, welcome to the second episode of Reactor Toots. I'm Peter, and I'm going to be showing you some more basic things like how to build a subtractive synthesizer. So last time we left off, I think we had a triangle, something like this, just a really basic sound. And we are going to add a few more oscillators and then connect a filter and take it from there, I guess. Uh, the basic principle of subtractive synthesis has to do with um, altering frequency content with filters. There's uh, comb filters, high pass filters, low pass filters, and let's uh, we'll just go with a standard low pass filter for now. So if you want to right click, go into built in module and then check out the filter section right down here. We have a bunch of different options. And the one that I usually go for is the multi LP four pole FM capable filter. We're not gonna be doing any FM right now, perhaps later, but uh, we see now that there's a bunch of inputs and outputs. And here's kind of a nice tangential educational detour. The signal types in reactor are very important to kind of distinguish from each other because they both do very different things. You'll notice that there are black and red inputs, and that's to distinguish between audio and event signals or signal types. Uh, audio inputs, audio signals come and go from black inputs and outputs and event signal types come and go from red inputs and outputs and the difference between the two is kind of self-explanatory audio is a signal going at audio rate an event signal is uh, event signals are the numbers that tell your oscillators what pitch to play at and they're the the uh, the metronome information that powers your sequencer or the triggers they're basically the backbone of your instrument um, and it's good to kind of grasp the difference between the two pretty early on so that being said there's kind of a a, a hitch to this um, you can plug in event outputs into audio inputs but you cannot plug in audio inputs to event um, audio outputs to event inputs like so I can't connect it to the to the um, to the P here because it's an event type and I'm using an audio However, I can attach it to the audio input here, which turns out is for FM, which requires an audio signal. So yeah, now, now that we got that out of the way, let's continue. And so we're gonna mouse over the inputs and figure out what everything does. So here, the P is kind of misleading. It's exactly the same uh, as the P up here, it wants a kind of a logarithmic control of the cutoff frequency. Typical range is from 20 uh, to 120, but I can imagine that you can go from 0 to 127 just fine. Uh, audible differences will probably be a little bit undistinguishable at that point, but that's fine. So, yeah. So from here, we just uh, take the output of the oscillator and plug it into the input of the filter. And then from there, if we mouse over each and every one of these, we find out that there are different filter type outputs. HP being high pass, and then we have band pass, low pass, uh, uh, two different poles, and then BL, which is kind of like a, a weird band reject. Uh, just use, it uses a one pole high pass and three pole low pass. So it's, yeah. It's, you got, a, you got a bunch of different filter types here. And if you just wanted to use one exclusively, then you could feel free to just take the output of your desired filter type, attach it to the output. And now, we just make that a little cleaner. And we don't hear anything, big surprise, because we haven't told the filter what cutoff frequency it should be, should be set at. So, the shortcut that I told you earlier is still valid here. If we right click on the input and click create control, it'll give us a knob with the typical range automatically added for us. It's really cool. And then res is obviously residence. So if we right click there, click control or create control, and we get 
a knob that goes from 0 to 0 0.98, which is nice because if it just went up to 1, then it would probably do uh, resident feedback and it'd be a really bad day. But if we switch over to the panel view by double clicking on the background, we see the knobs right there. And if we play, we can see that the filter is working. That's awesome. Sweet. But I'd imagine that you would grow tired of just using a low pass filter all the time and you'd want to be able to switch between the two or the four or the six. Yeah, six. So there's a million different ways to do that. I'm gonna go over the most straightforward way, which is with a switch. And if you go into built-in module, panel, and switch, it'll give you the switch module for you to basically plug in all these outputs into a set number of inputs in the switch. And that could be defined here under minimum number of, input, uh, of ports or an awesome shortcut that I just learned recently is if you command, click, and drag, it'll automatically create an input for you. And that is a huge time saver. Of course, now good practice would be to label all of these, but I'm just gonna label the first and last one just to save time. Awesome. And if we switch over to the panel view, we'll see that there's our switch right there. Now here's a good time to explain the wrench icon. And that basically means, or that basically allows you to move around the GUI elements. Is if we click the wrench icon, we see that the panel gets all uh, dotted gradient, maybe? I don't know. And um, you're free to click and drag and place wherever you want. So if I wanted the, f you know, the cutoff and the resonance up there and the switches all the way down here, I could do that. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, we could just select high pass. And then we hear that, and then we can do that BL filter. Sweet, progress. Um, yeah, from the panel view, it's easy enough to, add, to edit the attributes of the objects. You just click on the object, and then you can edit the title. So instead of switch, we'd call it uh, uh, just filter. And the same concept can be applied to anything, not just filter types, you can switch off anything. So let's say I wanted something other than a triangle wave, which would probably make sense. Right click, go to built in module, let's build a couple other oscillators. Let's build a sawtooth, put it up there. Oscillator, and then pulse, which is um, na native instrument for sine. Oscillator, and then what do we have next? Sign, sure, that's fine. So now we have a nice selection of basic oscillators for us to choose from, and we can attach the gate to the A for all of them, and then the note pitch to the P input for all of them, and then we'll be able to use all of these via, right click, go to built-in module, panel, a switch object. Now that's cool and everything, but I think it'd be a lot more interesting to interpolate between the oscillators as opposed to just switching them on and off and interpolating between them would give us some cool hybrids depending on where we position the, uh, the fader or whatever I choose to use. So if we go into signal path, we see something called selector and the module icon is pretty descriptive. We have a bunch of different inputs going to one output and that is adjusted through the pause input. So like before we command click and drag and it will automatically add these inputs here for us. Go to the output, click and drag that to the input of the filter, and now we have the ability to, oh no, we have to do a, create a control for that. And now we have the ability to interpolate 
between four different inputs. It counts from zero to three. But um, yeah. One thing that the selector does that Native Instruments hasn't really fixed yet for some reason is if you create a control just by right clicking and doing what I just did, it'll have the typical range at zero to eight. So you might be wondering why it cuts off after four and your fader is still doing something. So that's a good idea to kind of change right off the bat is from instead of zero to eight, you want zero to three because you have a total of four inputs. And now if we click the wrench, just drag it somewhere. So that's pretty cool. Okay, really quickly, I just made an oscilloscope. Well, I didn't make it, I inserted it because it comes with Reactor the program. Anyway, uh, I just threw it up here. It's just so we can check out the waveforms and see what the interpolation does. So if we go uh, from top to bottom, it should go from sine to triangle to square to saw-ish. Uh, yeah, let's check that out. So here we have the sine. Sine wave. So that's a little bit more interesting than just using switches. Because then we can get some nice hybrid hybrid waveforms. Uh yeah. So that basically covers how to add a filter and how to select between multiple inputs for one output. Uh, thank you for watching. Tutorial over. See you next time.